Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the case of Shelton Sanders, another unsolved case. All the way from 2001. So the thing about this case is when I'm reading you the details, you're probably going to have an opinion about what you think happened. You're probably going to definitely feel like you know probably who's responsible and what probably happened or what may have happened and you're gonna think that there's probably an outcome like a this this happens like there's justice well there's not because it is still technically unsolved but you're probably thinking in your head like this is just so obvious and the thing is it's probably going to upset you because it's not gonna happen the way you're thinking so instead of just being vague like I am let's go ahead and get into Shelton's story So, Shelton was a University of South Carolina student, and he had huge ambitions, so many dreams, and he was very young. He still had his whole life ahead of him. He was studying administrative information management and was working part-time as a computer programmer for USC's neuropsychiatry department in the School of Medicine uh, when he would disappear. And he actually had dreams of owning his own consulting business as a computer programmer. And he was also looking forward to getting married, having kids, and even possibly raising cattle, according to his sister. So there's a quote that's actually taken from Shelton's personal website. So these are basically his own words. He says, my goals are to finish college and receive a degree in administrative information management. Beyond college, I would like to work for a company for three years. Then I would like to start and run my own computer company, end quote. He is described as a high-achieving student and a hard worker with a bright future. He was also described as being incredibly intelligent and never complaining about the requirements of school or work. And he was a family man, a family man at heart, and they said he always prioritized his family over everything else. And a quote from William, Shelton's dad, he says, He was a super young man. He was smart, intelligent, willing, and able to work did not complain. He was very involved in his family. He made us proud, end quote. So let's get into his disappearance. So Shelton was last seen on June 19th, 2001 in Columbia, South Carolina. So on the evening of June 19th, he had traveled from his family's home, which was, which was in Rembert, South Carolina, to Columbia, South Carolina, where he would be attending a full day of classes and work. And then after he planned to stay later than usual to work on planning details for a friend's upcoming uh, bachelor party. He spoke with his parents between 8 and 9 p.m. when he let them know that he would be home later than usual and that he would be leaving shortly. Around 9.30 p.m., he went to Wellesley, Wellis, I think it's Wellesley or Wellesley Inn and Suites before going to an Embassy Suites hotel in downtown Columbia. And he was doing this because he was inquiring about pricing for the bachelor party for his friend. So reportedly, he went to the hotels with his friend and former college roommate, Mark Richardson. After looking at hotels, the two of them went, supposedly, to Mark's home on Olympia Avenue in Columbia to finish working out some details for the party, and that is Shelton's last known location. Now, we're going to get into some details where you're going to start, in your head, probably putting stuff together like, oh, I think I know. So... A neighbor reported hearing gunshots sometime before midnight, and they heard them, three gunshots, coming from the direction of Mark's home shortly before midnight, and that neighbor walked over to see what had happened, and Mark told him that his car was backfiring. Shelton was reported missing three days later on June 22nd. So, if you're like me, your mind is definitely already going, like, He's last, his last known location was with his friend. Gunshots are coming from, uh, supposedly, um, his friend's home. And then just a few days later, Shelton is reported missing. You're, the wheels are turning, you're putting stuff together, and you're like, oh, oh. Well, let's continue. Shelton's car was found basically almost two years later. And it was found April 26, 2003. And the car he had been driving on the night of his disappearance was his brother's white 1988 Oldsmobile Regency. 
And that was the car he had on the night that he disappeared. And it was found in the parking lot of the Greenbrier apartment complex in Columbia. So the car was found abandoned, backed into a parking spot. And the police quickly um, determined that it had been in the parking lot basically since his disappearance. According to police, cell phone records show that shortly after midnight, Mark drove to the Greenbrier apartment complex in Columbia, leading them to believe that he had taken the car there on the night of Shelton's disappearance in an effort to hide it. So those, those wheels are definitely turning now, aren't they? You're probably thinking, it's Richardson. It has to be Mark Richardson, because so am I. And guess what? In 2005, Mark Richardson would be arrested for Shelton's murder, and his trial began in 2008. On October 5th, 2005, Mark was arrested and charged with Shelton's murder, despite Shelton's body having not been found. His bond was set at $100,000. So, while being interviewed by police prior to his trial, Mark reportedly asked the following questions. He said, Let me ask you a hypothetical question. Is there such a thing as an accidental death in the state of South Carolina? And then he was told that he should probably explain what he meant. He also asked, how can I explain getting rid of a body? I don't know about you, but those feel very damning to me. Like, you're being interviewed for your friend's disappearance, and you're just asking the police, how how do you explain getting rid of a dead body? Like, that's, um, that's very weird to me. So, Mark's trial began on April 14th, 2008 at the Sumter County Courthouse in Sumter, South Carolina. And April 21st, 2008, the jury went in for de- deliberations. They, I, I actually can't believe this, they were unable to reach a verdict. Seven jurors voted that he was guilty, while the other five voted him not guilty. Because of this, his trial not only ended in a hung jury, but the judge declared a mistrial. And Mark was released shortly after, and Shelton's case has had no resolution since. And if you're like me, you're like, how? How? Because I don't, I'm sure there was a lot more information, like a lot more evidence that I was not able to find that they did not release to us. To the point where they were able to go to trial. Seven people thought he was guilty. Just hearing the uh, information on, in my notes that I have for you, I'm thinking he's guilty. And I'm sure you're probably thinking he's definitely a little suspicious. It was just odd to me that there were people that were just like, hmm, not guilty. Like, I don't know. That was just really weird to me. Police say that they were able, in the initial investigation, to gather enough evidence that they are fairly certain that this is a homicide, that Shelton has been killed. And unfortunately, his case has gone cold. So, where is the case today? So, in 2018, Shelton's sister, Wolveria, she launched the Finding Shelton Sanders Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And she's basically stepped up of being his advocate. And in the years since, the reward for information has went from 10000 to 25000 to 50000 where it stands today. Billboards have been um, erected across Columbia, you know, urging the public to come forward with any information that they may have just so that they can get justice. And this is actually a quote from Wilveria, and she says, We've forgiven anyone who's had any dealings with the murder or disappearance of my brother. We just want to bring him home to a proper burial spot where he belongs. We will not give up. We will never give up. We will keep going until all searches are completed, no stone left unturned. Unquote. End quote. If you have any information, you are urged to contact the Richland County Sheriff's Department Cold Case Unit at 803-576-3000 or Crime Stoppers of the Midlands at 888-CRIME-SC, which is 274-6372. Again, the Richland County Sheriff's Department Cold Case Unit is 803-576-3000 or Crime Stoppers of the Midlands at 888-CRIME, South Carolina, SC, which is 274-6372. And that is the information I have for you guys about Shelton Sanders. 
and his unsolved case. So, in my head, I'm, I'm incredibly upset because I feel like they had the right guy. You know, his last known location is with Mark. There are the sounds of gunshots coming from the direction of Mark's house. And sure, um, maybe it could have been his car backfiring. Sure, it doesn't change the fact that cell phone records put Mark at the Greenbrier, Greenbrier apartment complex the night he disappeared. Shelton disappeared, and that's where Shelton's car was found. Regardless if Shelton maybe did something to him, I do think he might have had a hand in it, at least. Because why else would he have taken the car there? Who else would have done that? Why would why would his phone ping in that location if he wasn't there? You know what I'm saying? Even if he didn't take Shelton's life, I do think at the very least he knows something else. And I think it's absolutely ludicrous that he was found not guilty. So, what do you guys think? Are you maybe one of the people that are just like, no, I definitely don't think, like, he, I, uh, I don't think maybe he did it. I think maybe it could have been someone else. Maybe he had someone helping. Or maybe he was just helping this person that did it. Or maybe you think that Mark didn't have any part in it at all. Let me know if you're one of those people. Or let me know if you agree with me. Like, yeah, this dude's pre- pretty sus. Like, his, just the cell phone records are alone are a little weird. Let me know which way you're leaning down below. Do you definitely think that they... Do you agree with the mistrial and the hung jury? Like, what do you think? Just let me know your overall thoughts about this case. Um, but that is the case of Shelton Sanders. Thank you so much for listening to his story. And I will be catching you guys very soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.